Hi there, and welcome back. In the previous video, we finished our game prototype, and there is a link in the description if you want to download it on your device and try it out. In this video, we're gonna start with code. Now, for those of you that are not comfortable with code, don't worry about it. It's not that complicated. In fact, let's do a quick demonstration and show how simple code actually is. If we go to our player and take a look at the move note code, there's over 100 lines of code that is written here. But would you believe me if I tell you that you need only three lines of code to add all this functionality that we see here? I'll actually demonstrate that. So we can remove all of this code and inside of our signal function, if we add this line of code and now run our game, you'll see that there is absolutely no difference in what's going on in the game. So all this code that you see is just here to scare you. Actually, all this code is here to support the options that we have for this node. But in our game, the only option that we're actually using is the speed. And that's why we could have just replaced all of that with three lines of code. So hopefully this quick demonstration shows that the code is not that scary and that you are ready to start coding. We are moving from Billbox to Unity to start coding. There's lots of reasons why we're doing that. So let's dive into Unity. Unity recently released a version 2019.4, and that's their LTS version. LTS stands for long-term support, and this is the version that we're gonna be using in this series. If you haven't seen our video on understanding Unity for Buildbox users, check that video out. That video will help you out understand Unity. And now it's time to start our new project. The second game that we're gonna be creating will be a 3D game, and we'll just call it second game. Click create. So here we are with a new project in Unity. Just a quick run through the windows that we have. We have a hierarchy on our left side, our scene editor in the middle, inspector on the right, and the assets at the bottom. So the idea for our second game is to create a 3D puzzle. And the goal of this game is to get you started with coding. We'll start really simple. And the very first script that we're gonna write will be a move script. So first let's create a new game object and we can do that by right clicking on the hierarchy and under 3D object, we'll use the cube. And that adds a cube in our hierarchy and we also can see it in our scene editor. Now we want to create a script that will make this cube move. But before we start writing the script, let's take a closer look at the problem that we're trying to solve. In this demonstration, we have point A for our object and point B an object. The change between point A and point B is distance. And the other thing that we need to know is time that that change takes place. So let's assume that our distance is 10 meters and our time is one second. From that, we can find out the speed and the speed will be D for distance over T time. If we know the speed, we can write the position of B equation in terms of A in this form. So position of B equals position of A plus our speed times the time. And if our speed is 10 meters over one second, which will be 10 meters per second, and our A position is 30 meters, then the equation will be 30 meters plus 10 meters per second times a second, and that will equal 40. So knowing that, let's go and start creating our script. And to create our new script, we can right click in our assets window and go to create, select C sharp, and we'll call our script move. Once we create that script, we can double click on it and our code editor opens. The code editor that we're using is Visual Studio. The language that Unity uses is C Sharp and I recently made a seven minute video on C Sharp. So if you haven't seen that video, it's a good video to watch. First, let's remove some of the code that we're not gonna use. So we'll remove this start method. We're also not gonna use the collection libraries. The only library that we're using right now is the Unity engine library and you can find the documentation of the library online. And here we have our class move that we created and our move class inherits mono behavior class. We're not gonna go into details about inheritance in this video. And inside our class, the only thing that we left was the update method. And as the comment says, update is called once per frame. And you can think of a frame as a drawn image of our game. We'll be doing all the move calculation inside of our update method. 
So let's write our equation out that we're trying to create here. So position B equals position A plus speed times time. First thing that we need is position A. And when we inherit a manual behavior class, we get some variables that come with it. And one of them is transform. So we can access the transform variable. And the transform variable is a transform component. If we go back to Unity, when we select our cube in our inspector, we can see this component right here, transform. And this transform component has position, rotation, and scale. And that's exactly what we get when we access the transform. Since we want the position, we can find the position by adding a dot and specifying position. So transform.position will return us position. And now we want to store this position to a variable. And to be able to create a variable, we need to know what type of variable we need to create. And if we put our mouse over position, we can see that the position is a vector three type. So we can use that, write out the vector three, and we'll call it position A, and use the equal sign to set it. And now we have the position A variable. The next variable that we need is speed. And since we're dealing in 3D space, we can have speed in X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. So let's also use a type vector three for our speed and our speed will equal, and here we'll create a new vector three and pass in the speed that we want for it. So let's say we want to move in the X direction by 10. So we can pass in 10 for X, zero for Y, and zero for Z. We got our speed, next variable is time. And in here, the time that we're looking for is the time that it took to run the update function or the time that it took to draw this frame. And we can get this in Unity by using the time class. And in the time class, we have the delta time and it's a static variable that we can get. If we hover over the delta time, we can see that it's float. So the variable that we want to create is a float and we'll name it time equals and now we're ready to calculate our position b so we'll use a vector three again position b equals position a plus speed multiply by time and there we have our position b now we want to update our game object that we created our cube to change position from position a to position b and we can do that by saying transform that position and say equals position b which is our new position and this script will make our cube move. So let's go and test that out. Go back to Unity. And currently, if we click play, we don't see any movement. And it's because we have not applied the script on the cube yet. To apply the script, we can select a cube and we can either drop it on the cube in the hierarchy, drop it on the cube in our scene, or drop it in our inspector at the add component. Once we drop that, we can see that our move script is in the inspector right now. And we can click play. And we can see our cube just moved to the right. And in the inspector, we can also see that the X position is changing. Let's stop that. Now we can use the script on multiple objects. So if we create a new object, let's create a sphere and let's move it a little bit further. And we can drag that script onto our new object. And now our sphere has the move script also. And if we play, we can see that both of them are moving. Now, what if you wanted to set different speed for the cube and the sphere? For that, we need our script to have some options that are displayed here. And in Unity, we can do that. And the variable that we're trying to change in the inspector is the speed. But currently, the speed variable is inside the method. And we cannot change variables that are inside our method from our inspector. So if you want to change speed, we need to move our speed variable to the class level. That's the same level as our method. So if we place it here, now the variable is on the class level. To give Unity access to edit this variable in the inspector, there's two ways you can do it. Either by setting the variable to public, which will also give any other class to modify this speed, or if you want to leave it as default, as private, to not let other classes to modify this variable, you need to use a serialized field attribute. And we can add that by using a square brackets and pass in the class serialized field. And this has to be done above our variable. Once you add serialized field attribute, the private variable that we have in the class will be editable in the inspector. So we click save and now we can go back to Unity. When we click on a cube, we can see that our speed is set to 10x, 0y, and 0z. And we can change that. So let's set speed of our cube to the z direction and set it to 2. And for our sphere, you can see that that does not affect our sphere. And we can switch our sphere to move in the x direction by one. And let's click play. 
and now you can see that the speed and direction of both of them are different. Now, before we finish up with this video, Unity already has lots of function that we can use. For instance, the process that we did here of getting the current position, then calculating our final position and set, we can actually do that in one line and that's transform dot translate and in here all we do is speed times time and for time let's use time dot delta time instead of our variable and we can remove all of this code now i can click save click play and you can see that nothing changed so there's different ways you can achieve the same task in programming hopefully you guys understood the whole process that we took to create this code and that it was helpful for you guys if you have any questions about the process that we took or you need more details about any specific part that we covered here write in the comments and we'll try to help you out with that if you found this video helpful click on the like button and we'll see you in the next one